Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's good to be back. I'm Dr. Jeff Eccles, and today we're very lucky to have with us uh, Joy, who um, I have found out recently has been having a little bit of neck trouble. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, would it be all right if, if we see what we can do to help you today? Please. Please. All right. Very good. So the first thing we want to do is just kind of find out a little bit about Joy and what's been going on with her neck, get a little bit of a history. Obviously, if she's been in a car wreck five minutes ago, we, we're probably going to want to take some um, care and find out so we don't do any more damage. But let's take a, let's talk with her a little bit. And Joy, can you tell me a little bit about you know, what you do and, and how it, uh, your neck affects that and, and maybe how this all got started. Uh, yes, I teach gymnastics as well as I'm an acrobatic yoga instructor and I also lift people up like on my feet and give them a massage while they hang upside down. So it's a lot of pressure in my neck and shoulders. Mm. Um, and I actually have got an x-ray done recently and my neck curves forward mm. so it pinches on a nerve right here and if it just gets really tight my neck starts to seize up Let's see. I can't really move. So it's very physical, very mm -hmm. kind of strenuous what yeah, you're doing. Oh yes, most certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of jumping, a lot of car wheels, a lot of handstands. And wow, <laughs> so, wow, I got yeah, it. Everything, bars, you know, doing front pullovers and kipping and... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'll have to check out some of your videos on that. <laughs> That's you. pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, have you ever seen an x-ray of your neck? Yes, I have. Is it real, real straight? Um, it actually curves the opposite way. Curves the opposite okay, way. so when we hear this, we know that she's got you know significant trouble in her neck. The neck normally is supposed to curve backwards like this. You know, So it's a C-shaped curve with the opening of the C in the back. And in her case, we, it's what we call a reverse curve. And when that happens due to, it could actually start as early as the birth trauma. Uh, it could happen through all of the slips and falls that she took as a, an infant or a youngster. It could happen through poor posture. It could happen through an accident. There's really almost no way to know exactly unless she has a specific really traumatic event as to how this might have happened. But I always tell my patients, you know, if you're in a burning building, you don't sit around and try to figure out what, how the fire started. You just want to get out, okay? After you're out safely, then you might want to speculate about how, how this happened, right? So uh, when you have a reverse curve like that, it, it puts all of the weight of her head now is going right down through the spine, and there's no way to absorb that shock. Nor in the normal position of the curve, it acts like a, a, a rubber band or a spring. And the, and the force from the head and gravity and her moving up and down, the spring just goes like this. But <clears throat> actually, it's better illustrated like this. It's kind of spring. But if the neck straightens out, now there's nowhere for that force to go. And the finger doesn't bend backwards, and neither does the neck very well. So now it's even, comp uh, it's even worse when it's like that. So we know that joy has a lot of stress and of course the muscles which are like guy wires guide wires on here they're kind of going to be stretched out of position too so in addition to you know starting to adjust this spine so that we have some of this c-shaped curve in there we may also want to give her some exercises that she can do at home we also use an orthopedic device in my clinic that actually helps to put that curvature back in her neck by leaning it back like that. And remind me, I may talk to you a little bit about that uh, later and see about getting you one of those so that when you're, oh, you yeah. could actually use that maybe while you were working on people and that might, that that might be really yeah. awesome yeah. to do that. But today what we, we're basically gonna do is we're gonna find out where she's having some of her trouble in the neck. Uh, and I'm gonna ask her a few more questions. Do you, Joy, do you get uh, headaches at all? Um, not, not very often. Mm -hmm. And about well, once a year? Um, probably actually when I do back bends. Anytime I practice a lot of back bends, I start to get more of like a cranial ache. Okay. And how often do you do that? Um, probably once to a couple times a week. Okay. So you're getting headaches once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And you don't call that very often. I, 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 I don't know. I guess <laughs> See, to I, me, that would be <laughs> extremely often. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's funny, I, this is, you'll notice that I'm kind of poking at her a little bit and I'm, I'm really asking her because it's important because 
I'll get patients a lot of the time and I'll ask them, you know, do you have headaches? And they go, no, nah, not really, just occasionally. And I'll, I'll ask them things like that. And then it turns out they're getting, you know, one or two a month or maybe one or two a week, like in her case. But to her, it's just a normal thing and it, she doesn't really think about it. But uh, actually, we consider one to two headaches a year as being normal. Okay. Anything more than that, there's something that's causing that and it should be investigated. Now, a lot of, and and here's where I run into some trouble sometimes with people because for a lot of people, and maybe Joy's one of them, this isn't a problem for her. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not a problem. She, you know, either she, now I don't think Joy would, but they take a couple of aspirin or they have a drink or they just go sit down. It's not a problem. It goes away. They have another problem they want you to help them with. But from a doctor's perspective, if we see something here and they're having one or two headaches a week, it's not the headache that's the problem. It's what's causing the headache is the problem. And I know that that's more significant than the headache because if we left that there, it could start causing degeneration in the spine. It would lead to arthritis. It could lead to more nerve damage, which could then further lead to other organs not working properly. So you see how that could be. Uh, it's it's kind of like, and this may be a bad example because some of these oil changing places have a terrible reputation for going, oh, you, you've got to have this done and this done and this done and this done, and it's usually a lot of BS. But if the mechanic, and he's a valid mechanic, gets under the car and uh, he says, is your, you know, is your car pulling to the left a little bit? And the guy goes, oh, yeah, a little bit, but it's not much problem because I just you know kind of counter with my hand. He goes, look, if you keep driving it that way, you're going to wear out your ball joints and then it's going to end up being a $2,000 job or whatever. So it's something similar to that. So even little things that the patient seems to be kind of insignificant, sometimes from the doctor's perspective can be very significant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we having some headaches. Uh, Now, what kind of pain are you experiencing in your neck? Well, right now it's very sharp and it's just kind of right right there where your neck kind of hooks on yeah it's very tight i can't really okay don't have much range of motion right now so Mm -hmm. it hurts (laughs) and that's funny for a yoga teacher to be saying that isn't it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we compared your range of motion and mine right now i bet you'd still win (laughs) okay so she's having uh from her own perspective decreased range of motion here in her in her upper uh shoulders and neck area lower neck and it and it's also painful. Are you having any numbness? No, but I have in the past. It's affected my fingers, and I've gone numb and tingly before. Okay. Like when it's really seasonal. Okay, so that's a real important um, finding there because we know that the nerves, uh, the spinal cord, actually comes down through the middle of the vertebra, and then the nerves kind of branch off of the spinal cord, and they exit through the little holes that are formed where one vertebra sits down on top of the other. That's where the actual hole is formed. And then when the nerves come out, they actually radiate down through the shoulders and they go all the way down into the arms. So if if the person is complaining of, of problems in the hand or numbness or tingling, we know that that nerve is entrapped or being irritated somewhere along the course of the nerve. It doesn't necessarily have to be the neck. Oftentimes it is, but it also could be trapped here in the shoulder where this uh, neurovascular bundle comes down through, just a big bundle of nerves and and blood vessels. It could also be trapped here in the elbow. We see that sometimes. The elbow may need to be adjusted. Or it could actually be in the wrist. So anywhere along here, it can be that. And I'll just kind of make a side note. A lot of times I find people who... Uh, they go to the doctor and they're diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal bones are the bones that are lined up here in the wrist and the the nerves and blood vessels go through a hole in those uh, bones. And it's called a carpal tunnel. And when through repetitive typing or whatever reason, sometimes screwdrivers, however that happens, these bones misalign and it can put pressure on the carpal tunnel and the person will start getting numbness in the hand. But oftentimes, this is misdiagnosed and they'll actually end up having a carpal tunnel surgery with no results at all because the problem never was in the wrist, it was always in the neck. So there's ways that we can differentiate that 
uh, based on where the numbness patterns that are, are in the hands and things like that. Okay, so she uh, has occasionally had pain and numbness radiating down her arm, so we know that there uh, could be some pretty significant misalignment in the neck, and then when she's overly stressed or having problems, it's going to cause that pain to radiate down in there. So the first thing that we would want to do is do a real thorough exam, and we would want to test the integrity of these nerve roots and find out if any of them are pinching the nerves and maybe shutting off some of these muscles. And then we'll be able to make the correct adjustment to free up those nerves, and then we may give her some exercises to help with the neck. Does that sound like a good plan to you? Yes, it does. All right. <laughs> So I think the first thing that we'll do is we'll just do a couple of real quick orthopedic tests while you're sitting on the uh, table. Now, normally I would check her reflexes, but I didn't bring my reflex hammer today. Um, so we're going to skip that part, but we do want to do a few orthopedic tests. This is just called the cervical distraction test. And what I'm going to do, Joy, is I'm just going to lift up lightly on your head. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I just want you to tell me whether it feels better mm -hmm. or whether it feels worse. Mm -hmm or whether there's just not much difference at all, okay? okay? So we're just going to take and lift up lightly. I'm pulling up on her head now. Is that better, worse, or no different? I feel like it's a bit better. A bit better. Okay, so that's, a, that's what we call a positive finding when that happens. And basically what we're doing is we're just pulling pressure off of the nerve when we do that, and she gets some immediate relief from that. So that's an, a very strong indication that she probably does have some nerve compression going on up in her neck area. Now the other one we're going to do uh, is called the foraminal compression test. And the way I like to do these, I'm going to put some pressure down here like this. Mm -hmm. If it, 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 it shouldn't hurt, <laughs> it shouldn't hurt. But if it does, yeah. I just want you to tell me right away and I'll stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put a little light pressure down. Yeah, that, hurts. that already hurts. And I just put very lightly. I didn't put, yeah. I didn't put five pounds of pressure on her head. Mm -hmm. And she's already complaining that 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 is uncomfortable. So again, that kind of reinforces our original evaluation of her neck that she probably has some nerves being pinched there. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll turn her head this way, like this. Is there any discomfort there? Mm -hmm. There is. Okay. And normally I would go ahead and put some pressure down, but there's not much need to do that because it's already uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go this way. Any there? Okay, and again, we would put some pressure down here, but there's not really much, much reason to do that. It's not going to change the outcome of the test, and I don't want her to be any more uncomfortable <laughs> than she has to be. So we've got uh, several orthopedic tests here that are not working properly. We probably would want to check her range of motion as well. So, Joy, turn your head all the way as far as you can. Try to get your chin to this area here. Okay, and her chin is not even close. Her chin is at about 50 degrees from here. Yeah, and she's really pushing it here. Her head, her chin should be able to go all the way to the the shoulder here. Okay. Huh, it's a good thing I showed up this morning, yeah, isn't it? Seriously. Okay. <laughs> now let's go ahead and try to turn your chin all the way this way. And again, we got maybe 50 degrees. Should be 80 to 90 degrees uh, range of motion here. So this indicates not only that there might be some nerves that we've already discussed that might be entrapped, but there's actually a mechanical disrelationship in the spine inhibiting you know, its ability to move and bend and things like that. Joy, go ahead and flex your head down for me as far as you can. Is there any discomfort there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So she feel, she's feeling it quite a bit right back here, and she should be able to go a little bit further down in that she should be able to get her chin just about to her chest here, but she's not, she's not doing that. So we've got more stuff there. And now let's have you lean it back for me all the way. And that's it, huh? That's it. Okay. And for a yoga teacher, she should be able to <laughs> bend her head so far back. You can't even see her face, but uh, she's well, not. She's, last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can't do that. No. Okay, the other one, uh, the other range of motion is I want you just to try to touch your ear to your chin. Just lean it over. Okay, is that, how, is that hurting? It's not, not terrible. Not terrible. It's very, it's okay, so I, I believe uh, you know, she should be able to get a little bit more range of motion than, the, than that. Let's go ahead and go this way. 
and definitely she should be able to get more than that. Okay, so now we know we've got some mechanical problems going on. When I palpate or feel, we've got some muscle spasms going on back here in your upper, this is the upper trapezius muscle. It's very tight, it's kind of knotted up. Can you feel that big knot oh, gotcha. that she's got here? So she's got a lot of knots. So it's important to know that if the nerve is being irritated, some people call it pinched, irritated, whatever, and due to whatever reason, uh, the nerve is being pinched, it's going to be firing. Like it's like, kind of like it's screaming, but it's firing. And this nerve is attached to muscles and organs and other tissues. But as far as the muscle goes, if that electrical activity is going through the nerve, what is going to happen to the muscle? It's going to respond and it's going to draw up and it's going to knot up like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's got a knotty muscle <laughs> right here, very knotted up. Okay. So what a, a reasonable person would do is go see a massage therapist, right? Because they're going, they've got muscle problems. And massage therapy is a wonderful healing art. If you've never been to a massage therapist, you should uh, find one that you really like and feel comfortable with and get some massages. Uh, it's wonderful. However, in my own practice and over the years, I have seen people when they have this problem, go to the massage therapist and he will work on this muscle and it will feel great for anywhere from an hour to maybe a couple of weeks. But since we didn't actually c stop or correct or, or this, this pinched nerve here, what do you think will happen to the muscle? It'll just go right back to where it was. And, and people mirror that back to me in, when I'm talking to them. They go, yeah, it feels great for an hour or two or whatever, but then it always comes back and I just keep going back over and over and over again. So that's, an, uh, uh, that's kind of an indication that you're not getting to the root of the problem. So chiropractic and massage therapy work really good together because oftentimes the chiropractor can help to relieve and remove the nerve pressure while the, therapy, the massage therapist is actually goes in there and starts working with the muscle and helping get all of those toxins out of there and getting it you know, limbered up and feeling better. So it's a great marriage between the two. So I feel this a lot more on the right side than I do on this left side. Do you concur with that, or does it does it feel as, ba as bad to you as it does on the left as it does on the right? I would say the right is definitely tighter. Yeah, it feels that way to me yeah. as well. So there's a big old knot here, yeah. and she probably has some trigger points. Trigger points are focalized muscle spasms within the in the muscle. And oftentimes, if you find those, you can actually do this on yourself. You can actually get in there and put firm pressure on that trigger point until it starts to lighten up. And then you can actually release it, and it will feel much, much better. I've actually rehabilitated my own shoulders after injuries. I'd be just sitting there watching television, and I would move my hand around until I found a very exquisite point, and then I would just put firm pressure on it. When I mean firm pressure... I, I would say about an 8 out of 10. So if 10 was like, oh, I'm, I can't stand it, I'd back off a little bit to where I could, but then I, I still knew that I had a tender spot. And I would hold that until it had dissipated. And then I would move to the next one and, and really poke around and find those places. This is an amazing therapy. You can, you can really help yourself a lot with this trigger point therapy. Okay. So uh, let's see. I think the next thing that we wanted to do was probably check some muscle function to see if any of these nerves that are not working properly have caused these muscles to be weakened. All right. Mm -hmm. This is a real good diagnostic uh, test that we can do. And that leads us straight away to where the problem is. So we'll get set up and um, we'll be right back with you. Okay. So we're back. We've got Joy laying face up on the table. And the purpose of this part of the examination is just to check some muscles that correlate with her, the nerves in her neck to see if they're actually working. First one we're gonna check is called the deltoid muscle. It's a nice muscle that sits right up here on your shoulder, helps you to bring your arm up and down like this. So we're gonna have her put her arm like this. And Joy, what I want you to do is push your arm up that way while I try to push it the other way, go ahead. And it doesn't do much, okay? Not very strong there. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm obviously bigger than, than Joy, and I, I can overpower her, but that's not the point of this. 
when we're doing muscle testing, we're just trying to feel whether the muscle will lock in place. And when I say lock, it means that when you push it, you can feel it just locking. If the muscle's weak, it won't. It'll kind of ratchet down or it'll just be kind of like a rubber band. It'll just keep going down without a whole lot of pressure being put on it. So let's try this one up here. Just push up. There we go. Now see that muscle. Did you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. when, when I push on this one, yeah. it locks. It locks in place. I felt the pain mm -hmm. down this way. Yeah. And oftentimes a person will, will say, oh, yeah, that hurt when I did that or whatever. So it's definitely not working properly. So the, the deltoid muscle here is related to one of the vertebra here in the lower neck area. And the nerve that comes out of there innervates or goes to that muscle. So we're going to have a suspicion that she's going to have some problems right there in that area that are affecting here. And I always love to tell my patients, and you probably heard me say this before, you know, when you step on a dog's tail, it's the other end that barks. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when a person has a problem in one area, we're going to see it maybe completely being symptomatic in another area. So the next muscle that we're going to check, Joy, is called the triceps muscle. And this is the muscle that is right back here. Everybody's pretty, probably pretty familiar with that. And it does the arm this way. So we're going to have you push down this way for me. Push. Very strong. That muscle locks in place perfectly. And that is for the nerve root that's directly below the one for the deltoid. Now let's go over here and check this one. Push down here. Very strong. Excellent. Now, let's go ahead and check one more muscle, or at least one more, to see what's going on there. These are the muscles of the fingers, and these correspond to the C8 nerve root, which is the very bottom of your neck. What I want you to do is try to push your fingers out, and don't let me pull, push them in. Push out. There you go, like that. Now, these muscles are very weak muscles, they're not very strong, and I can easily overpower them, but what we're doing is just to see that there is some resistance there and they're working. Let's turn the hand this way so everybody can see. I'm just, I'm just lightly pushing in, and you notice I'm at the base of the fingers. I'm not way up here where I can push, have more leverage. I'm just right here, and she's got pretty good ones there. Let's try the another one. Good, now push out for me here. And it's interesting, this little finger here, you're, See, she's trying to push it out, push out, but it just, yeah, there it goes. This is a little bit more difficult to discern. Yeah, I think, I think she's got it there. We warmed it up enough. I think that's working. But if that, if that little finger or the other one just kind of goes in and it's not, there's no resistance there, we know that there's definitely going to be a problem there. Okay. So one of the next things we'll do is try to figure out, uh, which way we need to adjust this vertebra in order to correct her problem. And she only had one muscle that was weak, and it was the, the deltoid muscle on the left side. Let's recheck that again. Let's have you push. Keep your arm just like that. Push up. And there's just nothing there. There's just no resistance there at all. So the first thing we want to do is try to find a head position that will strengthen this muscle. So, Joy, what I'm going to have you do is turn your head this way and lean it back like this. Okay, you okay there? Mm -hmm. Now push up real hard for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she said it all. She said it all. So when we put her head into this position, it moves it around so that that nerve is not being entrapped. And it immediately, it's, electricity is pretty fast, right? Immediately turns that muscle on. And now we have strength there, and you notice the difference mm -hmm. right away. Right Is that away. correct? Yes. Okay, so we know which head position that we need to adjust it in. Now we want to uh, figure out exactly which vertebra it is, and we want to figure out which direction that the vertebra wants to be moved in. Okay, so let me show you how we do that. We're going to take your arm, and we're just going to have you push back this way, and I'm going to push here. And I'm going to just reach under her neck, and I'm going to touch. Now, we're kind of, it's usually going to be C5, and it is kind of weak there, mm -hmm. okay? 
and then we're going to push it down and it gets really strong right there. Mm -hmm. So we know now that your head wants to be turned in this position and the vertebra wants to be adjusted in this direction. Okay. So uh, are you game for that? I am. You are. We'll see if we can get that muscle turned back on. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we've got Joy here on the table. We've already discovered that for her to have this problem corrected, her neck needs to be turned in that direction. We need to adjust the C5 vertebra, and we need to adjust it in a plane that's like this. So we're going to turn it right here. We're going to get right on C5 and just make a nice little adjustment right there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and uh, that actually moved very well. Now, after that, we want to just go back and check the muscle. We may have gotten it strengthened. We may not have. If not, we may have to do some other things to get that muscle turned on. But oftentimes, just adjusting the, the correct vertebra, and that's important that you're adjusting the correct vertebra. You can't just grab somebody's head and start... Mm -hmm. popping bones and expect it to get better you have to adjust the correct vertebra and you have to adjust it with the head turned in the correct position and you have to adjust the vertebra in the correct vector or alignment in order to get these kind of results so now we go back and we check the muscle push up for me oh wow <laughs> now we've got that muscle mm -hmm. turned back on feel yeah. a little different yeah it does yeah thank you very much you're welcome it's a little bit more warm in here Excellent. Very good. So let's just go back and let's just check all of the muscles again to make sure that everything is fixed and staying where it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. Okay. So we just checked that one. Let's go back and check the triceps. Push here. Good. The lumbricle here. Push out. Good. Let's check this deltoid. Push very strong and push here. Excellent. And push out. Good. Very good. Okay. And that's how you do it. So these are much uh, better. I think these are very conservative ways to work with the body's own natural healing ability so that we can bring about an, an effective change um, rather than maybe trying to medicate you with, you know, pain medication and drugs and anti-inflammatories and who knows what all to try to, you know, force the body into a certain way. We're going to actually work with your body to, to get it working and, and correct it the best that we can. You. You're sure welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you've learned something. And if we can be of any further help, please look on my website at www.jeffeccles.com. See you on the next video.